the Common Core Standards uh, Initiative, an effective reform tool, an effective reform tool, uh, was written by William J. Uh, William J. Mathis out of the University of Colorado in 2010. Um, I would like to begin by calling Mathis a soft critic. He doesn't say anything that com that that pretty much puts him against Common Core standards and their development, but he does bring up some very uh, key developments uh, in the in the standards that make them questionable. The three areas of topic that I like to discuss today are the context in which the context in which the standards were designed, uh, policy issues uh, that come with implementing national standards, and also implementation issues which we're pretty aware of. First off, the NGA National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School of Officer, Officers are the ones that kind of got together to to develop the standards, and they did this in an irregular practice. What happened is they, um, they from start to finish, they drafted and finalized um, these uh, Common Core standards in one year's time. Uh, it was done in a confidential way where they didn't involve too many groups or too many people. And there, it also had very little um, teacher involvement, um, which puts a lot of people uh, in the critic seat, kind of questioning whether these are the right, uh, if these are developed the right way or if these are written out the right way. Um, the second uh, topic is pol pol policy issues. Um, the Common Core State Standards are based on a set of assumptions um, and to kind of respond to these assumptions. The first assumption is uh, that high standards equal high results. Um, Mathis mentions a few results, but he, uh, a few studies, but he, see, he says that they are inconsistent and that the, the data pretty much doesn't support this idea. Another assumption is that national standards result in competitive test scores when compared to other countries. Uh, no, uh, again, whenever, whenever he compares these other nations and how they do test-wise, there is no, um, there, there's not enough uh, strength in that argument. Uh, in fact, he doesn't necessarily mention it, but he does say that nations who have a national set of, of standards tend to score lower. Um, another assumption is that the Common Core standards support the workforce uh, need in the 21st century, uh, which the Obama administration does have some research to support that, but not enough. Um, Mathis, uh, uh, he went, he goes ahead and he he goes ahead and he mentions the Brookings Institution. Uh, he also mentions the Economic Policy Institute and the Educational Testing Service, and all three of these are kind of opposed to that idea. One, um, the Brookings Institute says that pushing people to achieve high uh, career readiness will cause an influx, and and in uh, the high and medium job market. Uh, also, uh, with a lot of um, technology, we don't really need that many skilled people out in the world, uh, in the workforce today. And uh, another thing that kind of goes against this assumption is that um, to be called career ready is kind of a general term. It's too narrow of a term. You can't say to be career ready for uh, a welding job is the same to be career ready for um, an engineering job. Um, so it kind of it kind of says that the one one shoe fits all um, theory with with this end result uh, in mind is just not it's not enough. Um, the critics tend to go ahead and. Um, oppose from the sides uh, of top-down. They don't like the whole top-down standard approach. They also don't like the fact that the federal uh, government is involved in state matters. They, they feel that standards are, matter, are matters that should be de taken care of at the state level. Um, and also, um, they feel that the federal government is not strong enough to be, to be uh, implementing at state level and that they feel that they're overstepping their bounds in, the, in that way. Um, the third thing that I'd like to do, quickly discuss is implementation. Now, implementation, um, it talks about the content standards. Are they sound? Are they... Are, are, are people disagree with the way that some parts are emphasized at, th at the expense of other parts um, in regards to math and science or... Um, 
Um, it also talks about, um, really, it's just math. Um, it also talks about cut score issues, which is talking about uh, baseline score settings. Um, where do we draw the line of achieving or proficient, and where is what is passing and what is failing whenever we look at the standards, which leads right to um, assessment. Is the assessment sound, and why do we continue to put so much emphasis on assessment if it's not necessarily the best uh, way to show achievement? Uh, or results, um, the re and of course the resource issues. There's no money, um, there's no funding, um, so there is no there's there's it's just harder to get teachers uh, trained. It's harder to get materials, and it's harder to get te uh, technologies uh, to to properly um, implement these new standards. So those are the th those are the three parts: the context in which the standards are developed, uh, policy issues, and implementa implementation issues. I'd like to conclude by noting one of uh, one of Mathis's implement uh, implementation recommendations. Uh, Mathis mentions that we should consider the Common Core standards and implement them, but continue the the revision process. That as these standards are re, uh, are implemented in the classroom and are taught and used, that we should um, see what doesn't work and see what works and rewrite rewrite things or send them back to the writers for rewriting, uh, and of course build on or take away what doesn't work. Uh, with that said, I'd like to go ahead and conclude this uh, lesson and wish you guys all a good day.